Bom dia and welcome to São Paulo, Brazil. Now, in the title of this video, you will know that we're going to be talking about the top things to do here in one of the biggest cities in Brazil. Actually has a population of around 12.2 million just in the city centre. So there's lots of things to see and do. On that note, guys, let's get started and see the top things to do in São Paulo, Brazil. First up, Faro Santander. This iconic building has been called the Empire State Building of São Paulo and is one of the most noticeable landmarks in the city, which is located in the neighbourhood of Sé. Faro Santander opened in 1947 and was originally the headquarters of the State Bank of São Paulo. At the time of the completion, it was the tallest building in the city and the tallest reinforced concrete building in the world. Tickets cost 30 reais to enter, where you can travel to the 33rd floor to reach the observation deck and take in the endless 360 degree views of this massive city. From up here, you can take in all the cool street art, big avenues and massive skyscrapers. So we've just come to the top, level 26. Now this gives you the most amazing view over São Paulo. Now it actually has some things in English as well, so you can like get a kind of like a little bit of information around São Paulo, which is super cool, but the views from up here are amazing. Now it does cost 30 reais, so it's around like $10 New Zealand dollars, so it's so worth it as well. So there's two sides to this building that you can explore. So obviously you get different perspectives of like how big the city is and it's absolutely massive. So just a few like fun facts around São Paulo is actually the biggest city in Brazil. And then also it holds around 12.2 million people. Now me coming from New Zealand, we have 5 million in the whole of New Zealand. Now that's just 12.2 in the city center of São Paulo. So from up here, you can actually see how big the city is. And what's also very, very cool is it actually has a cafe on site so you can have a coffee and enjoy the beautiful views around you here. I definitely think it's worth a visit. It is so nice. I'm loving it up here. As you make your way down the building, there are exhibitions on most floors, including cool art, old bank rooms, and my favorite, the illusion rooms. Faro Santander is open from Tuesday to Sunday, 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. It's closed on Mondays. A top tip is best to visit during the weekdays as it's often much quieter than the weekends. In my opinion, this is where you get some of the best views in São Paulo, so make sure you check out Faro Santander. Welcome to São Paulo Metropolitan Cathedral. Standing tall over the centre of São Paulo, the Metropolitan Cathedral is best known as Cathedral Sé. It's located in the neighbourhood of Sé and is one of the largest neo-Gothic structures in the world. It's also the largest and most important cathedral in the city of São Paulo. The cathedral is 92 metres tall and can seat up to 8,000 people at one time. The organ is one of the largest in Latin America with 12,000 organ pipes. The cathedral was also equipped with 61 bells, which is one of the largest in Brazil. There are daily guided tours around the cathedral that cost 60 reais and take around two to three hours to complete. You can look around the cathedral for free, but you'll be restricted just to the first floor. I do recommend the guided tour as you get to go under the cathedral to the crypt, located below the main altar, which has tombs of historical figures and beautiful architecture. So we've just come here underground to this like underground basement part and wow, it is absolutely stunning uh, down here. It's kind of like this beautiful kind of brick roof with these beautiful chandeliers and the information, like the tour she is doing in half English, half Portuguese, which is really, really good. but. It's just stunning. You don't realize how big the church is until you come underground and you see everything. It's just wow. You also get to go up to the very top of the cathedral where you get incredible views over the city. These views over the square are very rare as this square is known to be very dangerous with drugs, beggars and pickpocketers. It's nice to enjoy these views all around the square and city without having to worry about who's around. A top tip is to visit during the day and keep your valuables out of sight and in a secure location. Wow, so just when you think we're going high enough, we keep going higher and higher and the views just keep getting better and better. This is just such good value for money so one ticket cost us 60 reais it's around 20 new zealand dollars but it's currently taking around two hours for the tour and you go every place in the church itself it is just so worth it and highly highly recommended you can reach the cathedral on foot or via metro set is the closest station taking metro line one 
Next up, Mercado Municipal. This enormous exotic fruit and vegetable market is free to enter and is located in the centre of São Paulo in a neighbourhood called Bom Hechero. It's open from 6am until 6pm daily. As you first walk in on the ground floor, you'll find any food item you could dream of. This is where you'll discover treats and goodies from Brazil. All types of nuts, coffee, fish, spices, meats, fruits and vegetables. As you walk around the market, locals will want you to try their fresh fruit and vegetables from their stalls. So make sure you come with an empty stomach and an open mind to trying new foods. On the second floor, there's several restaurants you can choose from. Here you can taste some local dishes from Brazil, including coxinha, mortadela sandwich and pastel. So we just got here for lunch now on the most famous market of São Paulo. It's called Mercado or Mercado Municipal. They have the most famous mortadela sandwich and the guy was just telling us that every sandwich has about a half kilo of meat on it. So we're definitely going to have to share it. Sanwiji da Mortadela is a Brazilian sandwich originating from São Paulo. The huge sandwich consists of a simple bread roll that's filled with mounds of freshly sliced mortadella, while a layer of cheese is added to the top. The mortadella is piping hot, so when the cheese is added, it instantly melts. Mortadella is a type of emulsified sausage made with pork meat, fat, pistachios and black pepper. The best place to try this mammoth sandwich is Mercado Municipal. And all you really need with this sandwich is a glass of cold Brazilian beer. This is a must try when visiting this market. To give you an idea of the market's impressive size, it has over 1,500 workers and around 350 tons of food are exchanged in the market every day. The market is absolutely buzzing at lunchtime with big crowds, so if you love a hectic, busy experience, go at lunchtime. But for a quieter experience, go before or after lunch to avoid big crowds. Stay at a Brazilian motel. Now this one's for couples. When we think motel in most parts of the world, we tend to picture a budget place to crash with the night when traveling on a budget. In Brazil, however, a motel is called a love motel. Motels are designed as a place to be intimate with your partner. Traditionally in Brazil, you live with your parents or family until you're married, and some never leave home. Brazilian families tend to be very close, with small houses and often multiple people sleeping in one room. This means a lack of privacy for couples. The motel fulfills the need to have a private place to have intimate time away from their families. And when you come here, there's a little menu with things you can buy. I mean, I'm not sure if YouTube will allow me to say what they sell in here, but they're all related to the action that's going to happen. So, a few loads around here and a few other things very quickly. So another really, really cool thing here in the motels in Brazil is you also have like a mini bar and everything that you need. So you have the fun stuff for the actual thing, but you also have like normal things like beers and you can have snacks and chips and stuff. So there's lots and lots of things that you can choose from. Motels in Brazil are like the Disneyland of intimacy. They provide a combination of entertainment, fantasy and escapism. Motels are everywhere in Brazil, from business districts to densely populated residential areas. Options range from a no-frills, cheap and cheerful room to luxury motels that offer a lavish and memorable environment from swimming pools, hot tubs and full ceiling mirrors. This was such a cool experience, especially because I have never seen this before, and every time I go back to Brazil it's on the top of my list. Next up, trying local food. Now we have already spoken about mortadella, which is a must try, but there are a few other foods I recommend trying in Brazil, including pastel, coxinha, and chicken parmigiana. Pastel is a pastry that is deep fried in oil and you can choose any filling of your choice to go inside, whether it's sweet or savory. As the pastel is deep fried, the pastry puffs up and creates a nice crispy texture. The fillings ooze out and are deliciously paired with the light pastry. On average, a pastel will cost around 10 reais depending on where you buy it and size. Coxinha. This is one of Brazil's favourite street foods. Coxinha is a crispy croquette filled with chicken meat and cream cheese that is cleverly shaped into a teardrop, then breaded and deep fried. Coxinha can be found anywhere from Brazilian snack bars, cafes, buffets, bakeries, markets and street food stalls. Costs will depend on size, so they can range anywhere from 3 to 15 reais. Chicken Parmigiana. 
This dish is chicken schnitzel topped with a lot of cheese and tomato sauce. The difference between a normal parmigiana to a Brazilian parmigiana is they cook the chicken inside the sauce to get a much more rich flavour. A parmigiana, like any traditional dish in Brazil, comes with a side of rice, beans and salad. This is the best parmigiana I've ever tasted and is definitely worth tasting while in Brazil. The dish will cost around 30 reais but again will change depending on where you go and size. Welcome to Bertioga. Bertioga is a seaside town located on the coast of São Paulo. By car it's about a two hour drive from the centre of São Paulo. There is also a bus that departs from the city centre if you don't have a car. Bertioga is a beautiful little town that's filled with lots of market stalls with awesome gifts and souvenirs to take home with you. You can enjoy the local markets daily in the summer months from December to March. Bertioga has some of the best beaches in São Paulo. One I highly recommend is a beach called Prainha Branca. To get to Prainha Branca, you'll need to catch a small boat from the mainland, which is free for walk-ons or 10 reais for a car. You'll then need to walk for around 30 minutes, or if you're driving, 5 minutes. Okay, so we've just made our way through the entrance of Prainha Branca. Now, the English translation is Prainha means like little beach, and then Branca means white. So it should be a little cute beach with lots of white sand. But the walk itself should take about 30 minutes. Some nice stairs to walk up, but already you can see the views around. They look beautiful. The walk is really well marked and the paths are nice and even. I would recommend to wear suitable footwear as there are a few hills either side. Once you arrive in Prainha Branca, it will remind you of a small hippie town with restaurants, street art and bars. There's lots of places to eat and drink so you don't need to worry about bringing lunch or drinks with you. Maravilloso! <laughs> Marvellous! Like, first impressions, holy moly! Like. I have been to some beautiful beaches and stuff and nobody talks about the beaches from Sao Paulo like walking down here I'm absolutely like it's just killer gal like so so nice. I just want to say I don't take anything out from Rio they are amazing but the reason people don't come to Sao Paulo for that type of tourist is because you guys don't know a local. Uh. Come with someone that lives in here or ask me <laughs> and I'll show you amazing places that's going to show that Sao Paulo is not just the city centre, you know. It we is can do so good nice. beaches too, guys. Uh huh, it's so, so nice. The beach is absolutely stunning and you have lots of space to explore without the big crowds. Bertioga also has one of the lowest crime rates of the São Paulo coast, making it an excellent option for relaxing and getting out of the big city. I would highly recommend visiting this stunning beach in Bertioga. Next, visit a local feira. Feiras are local markets that happen in local neighbourhoods around Brazil, usually once a week in the same location. This is where you can buy all your fruits, veggies and meats. The feira is different from the big markets as it's much more local and traditional. You'll see Brazilians buying their weekly shopping here so you feel truly immersed in the local culture. This is also a great place to try a bunch of traditional Brazilian foods and local drinks. The prices are also much cheaper here, so if you're on a budget, this is the place to come. Now that's my top 7 things to do in São Paulo. I hope you have enjoyed this video guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!